guys, what's up? It is Drew here from Lone Fox. Welcome back to my channel. I am going to keep today's intro super, super short and sweet because guys, I'm honestly like coming down with a cold. I have had body aches like all day and I had a sore throat yesterday, so I don't know what exactly is happening, but I'm praying it's nothing like the flu. Um, so I have been a little bit under the weather lately, but I really wanted to film a quick intro for today's video because we are creating some really, really amazing DIY stationery that is perfect for back to school. Or if you're not going back to school, you can use it in your home, in your office, at work, whatever you feel you need it for basically these stationary ideas you guys are so cute and I think you're going to love them they are also super super budget friendly so perfect for anyone going back to school on a budget which I'm pretty sure is almost everyone these days and don't forget to stick around until the end because I'm going to be doing a little giveaway for you guys but before jumping in if you are not already make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell icon next to the subscribe button it actually notifies you every time I upload a brand new video and I post every single week on DIY and home decor so it's just really really fun join the Lone Fox family click that button oh click that button and you can subscribe 100 free but let's just get into today's projects Alrighty guys, so jumping into the first project, we are actually going to be creating some DIY customized pencils. I'm starting off with some yellow and black pencils, also it's just some really pretty colors of acrylic paint, and you're also just going to need some masking tape and paint brushes. So what I am starting off by doing is actually wrapping all of the erasers because I'm going to spray a large majority of these pencils all solid white so that we have a nice base to work with. But for example, on this black one, I like to leave some of the black exposed, which is why I did purchase the black pencils because I find like the black is a really, really nice contrast on some of of the DIY pencils that we're going to be creating. So I am actually going to be sharing with you guys three different pencil ideas. I just wanted to give you guys a variety in case you didn't like one of them. You can do another one. So on the black pencils, I'm just covering up any section that I want to remain black because we are going to bring these outside and give them a nice coat of white spray paint. And you are going to have to twist these around and just let them dry in between coats. I think I did about two coats on the whole pencil, but you have to flip it a couple times to get all of the sides. And then you can remove the tape. So on the black pencils, of course, I added some larger sections because I wanted some like wider black bands. And then on the pure white pencils, I just covered up the eraser section just so that it didn't get non-usable. So the eraser is still very usable. And these are my finished pencils. But next, what I'm going to do is start off with the watercolor pencil. So I'm going in with just some light blue acrylic paint, and I'm just going to lightly just paint this onto the bottom section and then I'm also going to gradient it into like a sage green color. So I suggest doing this while the paints are still pretty wet. So move quickly with this because you are going to want to kind of blend the colors as you go from section to section. And honestly guys, this is not my favorite color palette I could have chose, but I wanted to give you guys the technique. So I think I would have rather used a different color palette, but I think it turned out beautiful nonetheless. And then I also wanted to just create a striped pencil. So I'm using a bright yellow, almost pencil color uh, acrylic paint and I'm going to just create a nice pretty like watercolor striping effect and then on the black pencils I'm using some washi tape just to mask off some sections to add some color blocking so this is just going to have some nice color blocked sections so I'm using some gold paint some pink paint some ivory paint and then I'm also just going to add in some very thin bands of gold around the black section in the middle and then for this last pencil, I wanted to do some really fun quote saying pencils. So some of these are a little vulgar and then some of them are very usable in school, but this is a printable that I actually created for you guys. You can find it in the description box below. You can download it 100% free. And I just wanted to give you guys some really great options of what to put on your pencil. And all you have to do is print this out on a basic printer paper. Honestly, the thinner paper, the better. And just use some Mod Podge to glue it down, but make sure to cut the paper very, very, very close to the actual typography. That way you don't have any excess length off the edge and then when you are completed with your color blocked pencil just make sure to pull off all of the tape and then you can go in with some Mod Podge and coat all of your pencils completely with a glossy coat of Mod Podge just to finish off the project. Jumping into project number two, I'm actually starting off with a spiral notebook I got at Target on sale for only $4.83, and I'm also gonna be using some fabric, some fabric glue, scissors, and a ruler. So what I'm starting off by doing is finding the end that actually has that fraying on it. A lot of fabrics come like this, but if they don't, you can just do exactly what I'm doing here and pull out a couple of the warp or weft strings to create your own frayed edge because this frayed edge looks really, really nice against the actual spiral, and it kind of covers up any color of the binder that's beyond the spiral that we can't really 
reach. So what I'm doing is laying my fabric over the top of the cover and I'm just cutting with about two inches of excess on all sides just to be safe. And then I'm using my Fabri-Tac adhesive and I'm just giving a very generous coat to the front side of this journal because we are actually going to be using a popsicle stick just to kind of mend it and mesh it all together. So I'm laying this down, getting it in place, and then I'm using a small little popsicle stick to kind of squeegee it out. So I'm squeegeeing out all the wrinkles. I'm also squeegeeing the glue into all the little crevices of the fabric and just getting it moving so that all the glue coats the backside. You could actually use a paintbrush and just coat the whole backside with glue, but I felt this process was really easy. And once you're done, just flip the notebook open and just cut with about an inch of excess on all sides because we're going to be wrapping this on the inside of the notebook and also cut your corners. That, that way we have a clean wrapped corner once we go to glue those down, which is what we're gonna do approximately right now. So I'm gluing those down with the Fabri-Tac adhesive and I'm just flipping up my edges and making sure they're really nice and tight. And then again, using that popsicle stick just to really kind of squeegee out all the glue and just mesh it to the actual binding. I feel like meshing is not the word, but we're gonna go with it. And I repeated the process on the back side. This is a great way to wrap any journal, any book with fabric if you want to. And then I'm actually cutting an insert for this. So the journal was six and one quarter by eight and one quarter. So I actually cut down my inserts to six inches by eight inches, leaving just a tiny little gap on all the edges, which you're going to see when I go to glue it in. Once I have those cut down, I'm just gonna use some glue and really coat the backside of this. This is going to just make sure that the inside of the journal is very clean and pristine. So I'm gluing this down and as you can see, there's just a tiny edge all the way around, which I do love that. You can adjust this to be wider if you want to. And another option that I thought of after the fact was to actually glue a little string underneath before gluing it down. That way you can tie your journal closed if you wanna do that, if it's like a diary or something. Um, I just wanted to give you guys that additional option as well. So that's exactly what I did. And I also added a popsicle stick on the front just to act as a little name tag. Project 3 might be my favorite one in the video. I used some embroidery flosses in different colors. I also used some really thick canvas fabric, scissors, and an embroidery needle along with this really pretty yellow zipper. So what I started off by doing was laying down my zipper on my fabric and just measuring out half of an inch from each side of the zipper. So the width of your canvas is going to be your zipper length plus an inch total. And then what I did was I just left a whole ton of excess. That way when I fold it and embroider it and stuff, I just have a large panel to work with. So next what I did was I found just a a random little point towards the bottom, kind of in between the center and the bottom of the fabric. And I'm just drawing a pencil shape. So this is just going to give me a guide for my embroidery. And as you guys know, I love embroidering things here on my channel. So that's exactly what we're doing to create a little DIY pencil embroidered pouch. So I'm starting off with some yellow to be the base of our pencil. And I'm just going to go through and just do a basic stitch around the whole outside section of where it's going to be yellow. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably seen me do embroidery before, but it's super simple. You're just going to create stitches and just make them whatever length or width you want them to be. I'm just doing a very generic one that's going to get me through this process pretty quick and easy. Once you reach the bottom section, I'm actually going to do a zigzag stitch because I feel like pencils actually have this effect on the bottom when you sharpen them. It almost has a zigzag look to them. So I'm creating a zigzag section on the bottom with some of the embroidery floss. And then I'm also going to just stitch all the way up the side. And once you are completely done, you can just tie off this color in the back and we are going to move on to the gray section, which is actually going to be the little metal tip that holds the eraser. So for this section, I actually did very long stitches just to add a really nice texture. So the stitches are as long as the length of the little pencil uh, eraser holder that I created. Um, tie that off on the end when you are completely done. And then for the eraser, I just did the same exact thing in the opposite direction. So I'm just making it the width of it. And this is a great way to easily and quickly fill in a section. So that's what I did. I think this looks so cute and just really fun and quirky. So that's the finished eraser section. And then I'm moving down to the bottom and doing the wood. So I'm using a light brown just to stitch. And for this, you're going to have to do like a lot of stitches in the same hole towards the actual point of the pencil but then everything's kind of going to just triangulate up to the pencil portion, if you know what I'm talking about. And then I'm going to also create the lead as the tip of the pencil and fill that in. 
Once your pencil is complete, I'm just trying to find like the middle portion of where that pencil is going to sit and I'm folding my canvas in half so we can create the bag. So I used a ruler to measure it from the bottom up to the pencil and I'm adding that same amount of length. That way the pencil is centered in our bag and I'm just going to cut off any excess fabric. So that's why I started off with a little bit of excess so I just had however much I wanted to work with. And then I'm using my yellow zipper and I'm gluing it right side down to the front side of the fabric, flipping it over and then flipping that zipper over and then gluing on top of the zipper and then folding the correct side of the fabric in again because you're gonna want the zipper to kind of be exposed as shown here. And then you can open it up, flip it inside out, and then you're going to be gluing again the correct sides or the outsides of the fabric together. Just put a nice heavy weight on this. That way when you flip it inside out, it has a clean finish. Project number four is actually inspired by Jordan Clark on YouTube. I will link her video below. I loved it and I wanted to recreate them in a little bit of a different pattern. So I just got a sponge from the actual dishwashing section and I'm using some paint, some moleskin journals, which I always wanted in high school, but like they were just the expensive ones that your parents would never buy you, you know? So I am doing it now. So I'm going on the front of my journal and I'm marking an inch down on the entire front half of the journal just to create guidelines. And I'm actually gonna be stamping this like very random sporadic scallop pattern. So I'm just doing this wherever I want to add it. There's no rhyme or reason to this. It's very random, but in the end, I think it makes such a cute little pattern and it totally looks like a piece of stationery you would buy for so much more than this journal actually costs. And by the way, these moleskin journals are $15 for a pack of three, which I know is pretty expensive, but when you think about it, you do have a little journal for four or $5 that you can really customize and make your own. And I also love the craft color that this comes in. I think the brown's really, really pretty. So I went all the way across, used my half scallop sponge to do that. That. And then I also wanted to just create one more. This one's definitely inspired uh, by Jordan's on her channel, but I did a light blue color and I just did a very nice little plus sign all the way across just to create almost like a wallpapered patterned effect. And then I erased any pencil lines and those are your cute little painted stamped journals. Project number five was actually one that was not even gonna be in the video, but I ended up liking the outcome, so I didn't even really film the entire process, so, but I'm just gonna tell you guys about it anyways. So I started off with a piece of excess cardstock that I had laying around, and then I used a watercolor brush with some watered down acrylic black paint. I just added a bit of water to some black acrylic paint and created a nice little watercolor, which I then wrote out the word notes with. So this is great for the front of a binder. And I just added a little bit of shading every now and then if I felt like it was necessary, finished off that T section at the top and then what I did to kind of create a more organic fun effect was just splatter on some of the black dots so just tap as I'm doing here and then I also wanted to go in and add some sequins so I added some little circle sequins and also a couple of these super cute little star sequins so in the end I think this kind of looks like a modernized galaxy and I also added a couple of pencil scribbles just to add again to that organic like freehand look slide it in your binder and it's just a super easy binder insert that makes your binder instantly so much cuter All right, so those are all of my stationary ideas. I hope that you guys really enjoyed these and I hope that they are very usable and functional for your back to school season or again, if you just have, want to put them in your house, in your office, whatever it might be. I honestly purchase cute stationery and just don't even use it. Just like let it sit on my desk and just stare at it because I'm not really a note taker. So I just like leave it there and hope one day I'll need to take a note. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to be doing a super simple and easy giveaway. I'm actually going to be giving away all of the supplies I made in this video to one lucky winner because I just want to give back to one of you guys for the back to school season. And I personally, I don't really need these um, projects. I'm not going to be using them as much as I feel like someone else can. So all you have to do to enter this giveaway is legit be subscribed to my channel and just leave a comment in the description box below. And when you leave your comment, just make sure to um, include either your Twitter handle or your Instagram handle or some means that I can communicate you by to get you your nice little prize of all of the stationary items that I hand created in this video. So it's super easy and simple to enter that. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I will catch you all in my next one. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Bye guys. <laughs>